Uh, it looks like it's all coming up roses right now. Well, I think what we're seeing is the impact of, of all this pent up demand and all the stimulus that's in there. Consumers have not been able to put money in certain categories because some parts of the economy were not fully reopened. And so they've got savings sitting on the side. You and I talked a little bit ago about that two and a half trillion dollars sitting in bank accounts or paying down debt, consumer credit debt, things like that. So consumers across the board, and we have to recognize still millions of Americans unemployed families that are that are not doing as well as we'd like them to do. But in the aggregate, the American consumer is very healthy, and you're seeing that come to play. I, I think, as you and Emma just discussed, the noteworthy thing here is we're going against really tough comps from this time last year when people really were stockpiling in March and April and still beating those on a year-over-year -year basis. That's really impressive performance. What do you members think about what's coming down the pike? Because we hear a lot of talk about a lot of money sitting in the balance sheets of households. There may be a lot of money that hasn't been spent yet, actually. People are talking 2.5, even $3 trillion. Yeah, I think that's the thing that, as we go back to some of our pre-pandemic behavior, you know, how are consumers going to take that pent-up demand, those savings, and the things that they've been uh, accruing and put that to work in the economy. And what's the balance going to be like between goods and services or between sort of the durable things or the consumer products and the service economy? And, and I think that's where we'll see retailers really be able to demonstrate the way they've evolved and, and meet the new needs and expectations of customers in this digital, this virtual world, delivering things in a blended hybrid way, giving them new services, making things more convenient, whether that's in payments, or fulfillment or logistics or the way in which they connect socially and, and in a digital world. I think that's where we're gonna see what the next phase of retail really looks like, this renaissance as we come out of the pandemic. I think that's really exciting. Matthew, do you have a general sense of where we are in that renaissance? Because for the longest time, it was all, let's be frank about Amazon, everybody buying things online. And then you saw really Walmart step up and make some big acquisitions, move into it. And increasingly, we're seeing retailer to retailer really beefing up and making huge strides in our online. Do you have a sense, are we 25% of the way, 50%, 70% of the way? How far are we in that renaissance, as you call it? Yeah, well, I, you know, I heard someone say this recently and as, say maybe we're in the third inning or the fourth inning, but the way, I one, one bit of a little data point or some context, David, if we went back to the recession 10 years ago in 2009 and 10, in each of those years, we averaged more than 400 retail bankruptcies in each year. So over the three years, it was almost a thousand bankruptcies in retail. Over the course of 2020, that number was only about 50, 50 or 60. The overwhelming majority of those were restructurings, not liquidations. So the industry is healthier than it was a decade ago. Consumers are healthier. And I don't think we can overstate the impact of the 2017 Tax Reform Act, which made it possible for retailers who paid at the highest corporate rate, more than 35%, to take some of those savings when the rate was lower to 21% and reinvest that in their businesses I think that's one of the real reasons we didn't see more failures this last year, because retailers got healthier, they made smart investments, they're ready to meet consumers where they are as we go into this next phase. One of the things we hear a lot about is not just how much money is in the system, but also the possibility of inflation. Uh, are there some cost pressures that are showing up for retailers, whether it's labor costs, whether it's input costs, the cost of goods, and can they pass those along? Well, I think certainly we're going to start seeing input costs, and we've seen shortages. A year ago, there were stockouts for different reasons because consumers were hoarding, but but now we've seen things change to the point that uh, we know all kinds of input goods uh, are in short supply, and so businesses are out there trying to find the things they need to serve their customers in different ways. Uh, I think that remains to be seen. There are a lot of moving parts here. There's still several trillion dollars after we pumped in five or six trillion in the last year. There's still a couple of more trillion that hasn't really been applied yet. And you're seeing some strange outcomes, things like putting $450 billion back into state aid, and then a state like California has a $75 billion surplus. And so I think we have to see how some of these things play out before we're really going to be able to predict what the future looks like. I, I think one thing we know for sure, consumers are starting to open their wallets. As the economy reopens further, more of these uh, restrictions get lifted. We see people resuming their pre-pandemic behaviors. I think we're in for a blockbuster summer, and it's going to be exciting to see how retailers continue to serve those customers, 
take care of their team members and uh, help drive our economy forward. Matthew, it's one thing to have to pay some more for some of the inputs, whether you can pass along or not. It's another thing if you just can't get the inputs at all. I mean, we're seeing it, for example, in semiconductors right now in the auto industry. Are you seeing in retail just some total breakdowns of some supply chains? Well, I think, you know, when, when the stories get written and, and, and the uh, case studies get written a decade or, or maybe in a couple of years from now, on the way retailers in particular responded, kept the economy moving, kept those distribution centers open, uh, worked through their supply chain challenges. I think we saw the supply chain bend last year, but sitting here today, it's hard now to recall the remarkable work that those millions of retail employees did to keep our communities running. And when many of us were locked in our homes for weeks at a time, afraid to go out, fearful of what we didn't know about the pandemic, the retail industry was on the front lines there and, and I think you know, what we're seeing now is the rebound of the supply chain. Retailers obviously worked with their partners, learned an enormous amount last year, had the opportunity. We saw a great holiday season. We've seen the last couple of months of amazing performance in terms of retail sales. Our forecast for this year is six and a half to eight and a half percent growth. And we feel very confident we're on track to meet that based on consumer behavior and based on the overall strength of the economy.